If you're like me, you probably spend most of your motorsport time watching Formula One. The insane performance and cutting edge technology makes these machines nothing short of spectacular. But maybe this pinnacle of motorsport engineering doesn't always translate to the best racing. And I'm sure that you've probably also found out with this surge in popularity of Formula One, tickets are pretty expensive and at the track you really don't get that much access. But what if I told you that you could get a whole new level of access to the motorsport world while also seeing races at some of the most iconic circuits without having to take out a second mortgage? Just the other week, MSI Gaming, who have partnered up with Mercedes AMG Motorsport, invited me to come behind the scenes into the world of sports car racing and share it with you. We'll get up close with the cars, drivers, and engineers, and even see how esports is starting to change the world of motorsport. And a huge thanks to MSI for sponsoring this video. And right now, we're on our way to the final round of the 2023 GT World Challenge Endurance Series at a circuit you all know very well, the Circuit de Catalunya in Barcelona. GT World Challenge is a sports car racing series that has both sprint and endurance championships. The endurance championship has races like this weekend's Barcelona 3 hour, but it also includes iconic races like the 24 hours of Spa. The main event at GT World Challenge is comprised entirely of GT3 cars, which are production-based road cars built to the FIA GT3 regulations. The cars are somewhere between 1,200 and 1,300 kilos and produce between 500 and 600 horsepower. Other than the base structure of the chassis, the cars are heavily modified, from racing suspension and big brakes, to bodywork like wide body kits, splitters, diffusers, and rear wings, and of course, all the necessary safety equipment. The GT3 regulations also allow traction control and ABS, unlike Formula 1, and part of that is to do with the drivers. Another unique aspect of sports car racing is that some classes have professional drivers, but there are categories which also include non-professional, sometimes referred to as gentleman drivers. And to learn a bit more about the key challenges of sports car racing, Stefan Wendel, head of Mercedes AMG Customer Racing, took some time to answer a couple of questions to get but, us uh, up to speed. What, do you, what are you, some of your favorite parts uh, about sports car racing? I think uh, it's a challenge over the endurance races. So this is specific from my perspective yeah. to uh, GT racing, sports car racing. Here is, is a mixture. It's um, the best drivers, GT drivers in the world, uh, fighting for for three, six, or twelve, or twenty-four hour races. They're sharing a car. They have to make compromises. It's more a team sport. We're out here with MSI Gaming as well as Mercedes AMG Motorsport, and we've got the SRO Pro Esports Sim Competition on site. So, where do you see the future of motorsport in esports? I think it's a very interesting uh, concept here at the SRO, having the esports event in place and to make the atmosphere of such an event uh, feasible. Because it's not only racing, and uh, you're right, uh, it's sometimes really hard to differentiate cars on uh, eSport, uh, looking so realistic to, to the real coverage and, and live streams. But, uh, you know, if you're walking around the paddock and you see the drivers, you smell the tires, you hear the cars, yeah. this is maybe the difference which everybody will miss. Yeah. But nevertheless, I'm happy uh, to support, and I like all the initiatives uh, MSI is doing, to, to offer the, our kind of sport to young age people yes. and to grow the motorsport enthusiasts from, from the basic. And therefore, I think eSport is there. Here and there, we will for sure find the next uh, Lewis Hamilton. Now it's time to get into the action of the race weekend. Thanks to MSI Gaming and their partnership with Mercedes AMG Motorsport, I got to go behind the scenes with a couple of teams and learn more about the racing and engineering and really see what sports car racing is all about. But before we head into the garage, which is off limits to most people, let's talk about the access for fans at races like GT World Challenge. In most instances, you can get paddock access and grandstands for the entire weekend for cheaper than you can get a single day general admission ticket to an F1 race. It's wild to see just how close fans could get not only to the drivers and teams, but also to the sights, sounds, and smells of the paddock that in Formula One are nearly impossible for most people to access. And honestly, the value and experience overall is amazing. So it's time to go visit the Akotas ASP Team Garage, and they're the overall winners of the 2022 GT World Challenge Endurance Cup with Car 88 featuring Rafael Marcello, Jules Gunon, and Danny Juncadea. Oh yeah, and here's a picture of me and Danny, you know, like 10 years ago when he was a test driver at Force India. This year, Akotas are one race away from winning the 2023 championship with the 88 car as well. Akotas are running a total of three cars here, two pro cars and one amateur car, and other teams in the paddock may enter only one or two cars. So here are a few differences to the Formula One world, and let's start with the pit stops since we're in the garage. 
In GT World Challenge, you have refueling, and only a few of the mechanics are allowed in the pit lane at once. You've got a few tire changers, a refueler, and the car controller. Another interesting aspect of GT World Challenge is that there's a minimum refueling time in most of the races. You need to push in the pit lane, but there's still plenty of time to fill the tank and change all four tires and drivers. As far as engineering goes, there's a little bit of a difference here as well. In F1, you've got a lot of different specific engineering roles like strategy, race, and performance and data engineers. But in GT racing, the teams are quite a bit smaller. The race engineer might also do strategy and tire management, and the data engineer does performance, fuel strategy, and even looks after some of the car systems. It really just depends on the size and capacity of the team. Most of the time, the engineers are tucked behind some bannering in the garage, and I didn't really want to risk showing off any sensitive information, so I didn't get any footage back here. But while we're in the Codis garage, let's quickly talk about the number 87 car. This is the car that ran the awesome Silver Dragon MSI livery at the Spa 24 Hour this year when Mercedes AMG and MSI launched their partnership. Not only do they sponsor this car, but they also sponsor Thomas Drouet, the 24-year-old French driver of this car. And this is where I think things start to get interesting for the future of motorsport. As you know, it's notoriously difficult and expensive to get into motorsport, and esports is a great way to open the doors not only to driving, but also engineering and other aspects of racing to younger people that don't really have the means to go racing in carts or even sports cars. And it's really great to see cutting edge, high performance gaming brands like MSI working together closely with AMG to bring accessibility and awareness, not only to motorsport in general, but using esports to strengthen that connection. And at the GT World Challenge events, MSI are not only involved in their partnership with Mercedes AMG on the track, but at these endurance events, there's also the on-site SRO Pro Esports Championship running in parallel, where the event organizers, the SRO, are also helping to mesh the world of esports and motorsports into one. And to help explain some of this weekend, I got a chance to speak to Renee Sievert, team manager of the Mercedes AMG esports team, Unicorns of Love, who are also working with MSI Gaming. Talking about esports becoming a lot more serious, you've got huge motorsport organizations like Mercedes AMG Motorsport coming on board to work with you guys. You've got MSI Gaming, like one of the leaders in cutting edge gaming hardware. Can yes, you talk sir. me through some of the hardware that you guys use or some of the products that you use that, from MSI Gaming that help you guys to achieve you know, these amazing results? We uh, got the, the new MSI um, laptop, uh, which is in yeah, collaboration with AMG. Talks. It's amazing. I mean, if you travel a lot, it's, it's great when you want to still yeah, do some gaming in yeah. the evening. And yeah, we are also using the MSI headsets yeah. for, for the on-site to communicate together, me and my drivers. Sure. So yeah, that's that's what we use mainly. For I mean, sure. hardware is very important yeah, uh, because, for sure. um, I mean, in real life, you have like an engine which yeah. can blow up, yeah. but in eSport, it's not really possible. Yeah. So the only thing which can happen is that your PC is too bad. So yeah. we have a lot of lags and something like that. It's, it's very important to have a partner which can yeah um, give you access to, to good hardware. Yeah. To give us a little bit more insight into this esports championship and the world of sim racing, we also got to talk with Michael Tauscher. In your opinion, like what are some of the biggest differences between IRL racing, because we have the GT World Challenge, we've got the GT3s, the GT4s going on track. What is the biggest difference between that that you see com compared to, let's say, professional esports? Um, in real life, obviously, you can't practice as much in, as in esports. You always have uh, track days. Yeah. And uh, in eSports, it's just like you wake up and you could just basically practice the entire day. Yeah. Um, and obviously, here in real life, you have G-forces, which we don't have. Yep. I think those are the biggest differences. Sure. When you have a big event coming up, how much per week are you practicing? It depends on every round. Um, one week, maybe 10 hours to 15 hours in one week. And then we start two weeks before the race. Yeah. So it's, uh, we had a race where we practiced like 50 hours. Um, so yeah, it's a lot. You can find the full interviews with Michael and Renee over on the MSI Gaming YouTube. After talking with the guys, I came back a few hours later for qualifying and the race. And honestly, it was so impressive in not only the competition and how close the racing was, but in terms of how much support the series is putting behind this. There are more than 24 pro sim rigs in the arena. There was a live broadcast with all the crew and the commentary desk and all of this to stream it live on YouTube to get it out to the fans. And it really made this esports event feel like we were sitting in a studio watching a race that was actually happening on the circuit behind us. Honestly, what a super cool event to see. But now it's time to head back for some rest and come back to the track action tomorrow. Sunday is the big day. And at this event, we have qualifying in the morning and then the three hour endurance race after lunch. 
And to help me get up to speed quickly with how qualifying and racing works for this three hours event, I caught up with my old Warzone gaming buddy, Philip Ellis, who is also a Mercedes AMG performance driver. So, in these events, like Formula One, qualifying has three sessions, but unlike F1, we have three different drivers to work with. The qualifying is taken as an average of the three drivers' time, and as we talked about before, this gets pretty interesting when you have a pro and amateur car driver lineup. You can find a lot more performance by setting up the car more towards your AM driver and slowing down the pro driver slightly versus optimizing the car for your pro drivers. Another challenge for qualifying, much like F1, outlap tire management is critical. You've got to make sure to keep enough temperature in the tires on the outlap, but not push them so hard that you overheat them, which is pretty tricky when you've got up to 54 other cars on the track at the same time. Talk about a race engineer and strategy nightmare. For these three hour endurance races, strategy is actually pretty straightforward. There's a fuel tank limit, which is somewhere around an hour's worth of fuel, but you've also got minimum or maximum driver time. So realistically, there's not much strategy variation unless something goes wrong. You have an hour per driver. And in the race, pit stop and driver changes aren't so critical as there's a minimum fueling time, which leaves plenty of time for driver, tire change and refueling. There's certainly a lot more to play with in terms of strategy at the 12 and 24 hour races, but these three hour races are more like endurance sprints. After qualifying, we had some lunch and then it was time to get ready for the big event and I could not have been more excited to see the green flag. But there was a motorsport first for me this weekend. After attending over 100 Formula One races as an F1 engineer, I never had actually been on a grid. It was quite wild walking around with all of the crowds and the mechanics pushing the cars through, people trying to take photos. It was it was awesome just to be so close to everything. And then at the front of the grid is the championship trophy. I wonder who's taking this thing home today. After the pit lane cleared, we went to the roof to watch the race start. I remember when I was performance engineering in F1, the adrenaline is so high for these standing starts. And there was something equally exciting waiting for 54 cars to round the final corner of Barcelona and take the rolling start. And to be fair, seeing this many cars on track at once was, was stunning. No matter where you looked, there was a battle and not only are there overall winners, but you have several different categories and championships occurring at the same time, which is a really exciting part about sports car racing. The more I got to sit back and watch the cars, it was really, really interesting to notice. All the manufacturers of cars have such different personalities, something that you don't really get in F1. I mean, maybe in F1, the Ferrari engine sounds a little bit different from the Honda, but this was an entirely different level of variety. I mean, you've got the rear engine Porsche and the mid engine Mercedes and the front engine BMW. And then as far as engine sounds with different full throttle notes and different downshifts, you've got the Ferrari, it's got a 3.0-liter V6 turbo. The Mercedes AMG has a 6.3-liter V8. The Ferrari has a 5.2-liter naturally aspirated V10. And then there was something else in between this for the other six manufacturers. After watching the first few laps from the roof where you could see turn one, two, and then you could also see turn five and six, I went back to the garage to chat with Philip and watch a bit of the race. Honestly, I've got to have timing screens to properly enjoy a race, otherwise I'm just lost. And it was a great opportunity to catch some pit stops and see what the driver changes were like in a race situation. There was plenty of chaos and carnage and something that I think is quite normal when you have such a huge field on such a small circuit, but how close these cars could battle lap on lap was so enjoyable. But after two hours of mostly green flag racing, the end of the race had quite a few safety cars and full course yellows. And can we just take a moment to appreciate the men and women that spend their weekends marshalling at racing circuits? I mean, it's a risky job to make sure that we can enjoy motor racing and they rarely get the appreciation that they deserve, but they do get pretty damn close to the action. After the three hours of racing was over, the checkered flag came out and it was time for the podium ceremony. The Akotis ASP team car number 88 in the Mercedes AMG GT3 claims the overall GT World Challenge Europe Endurance Championship and everybody gathers around for a quick celebration and some photos. And then as we've gotten Formula One, the podium ceremony commences, complete with trophies, spraying champagne, and of course the drivers dropping the champagne bottles so the crew can share a little bit of the celebration as well. And it was kind of strange standing under the Barcelona podium again. I mean, I don't think I'd been here since 2016 when Max took his first victory with Red Bull, but it was great to be able to be in the pit lane and experience this atmosphere all over again. Driving home from the circuit on Sunday night, I was honestly still buzzing. Compared to what I'm used to in the world of F1, the level of openness of the paddock and access was still a pleasant surprise to me. 
And not only were there so many passionate race fans in the paddock, which is great for the atmosphere of these events, but being back in the pit lane and sharing some of these conversations with young aspiring engineers, old friends, current race engineers, drivers, and team owners really made me feel quite lucky to be a part of this motorsport world for so long. And I'm even more so thankful that with the job I'm doing now, making this YouTube content for you guys, that MSI Gaming and Mercedes AMG Motorsport gave me the access and welcomed me into the world of sports cars so that I could share it with you. Again, a huge thank you to MSI for sponsoring this video and also a huge thanks to Mercedes AMG Motorsport for all the access and hospitality this weekend. And I hope this video has encouraged you to go check out a sports car race soon.